Howdy, I'm Bob Terry. Welcome to Western Trails. Recently, we've been searching through our archives of things we recorded years ago, and we've discovered many things that we recorded that we've never released. What's coming up next is something we just recorded for our own reference, because it's with a handheld camera while sitting in the audience at Western Film Festival. But the more I watched it, the more I realized that this really needed to be released for public viewing. This is an amazing story. And the storyteller is Johnny Western. And he's relaying how he came to compose the Have Gun Will Travel theme song and what an impact that has had on his life. I think you'll really enjoy this, even though it is a bit shaky. Sit back, relax, kick your boots up, and enjoy this. And we'll see you after the show. How did I come to write the theme song for Paladin? How many of you have seen the episode that I did as an actor with Jim Blockhart as Dr. Thackeray with Richard Boone, the smallpox epidemic on the ranch? I had uh, begged Lynn Stallmaster, the casting director of Gunsmoke, and he cast me in Boots and Saddles. If there was ever an episode of Have Gun Will Travel, which was shot on the same lot there at California National, I wanted to have a shot, especially if there was a gunfight scene with Richard Boone. I was in the fast route at that time with Arvo Ojala, who had taught me that I was very fast. I was, you know, young and tough, I thought. And 23 years old and very fast. And I was hanging out with Dick Jones, who was very fast, and he could do all the stuff by himself, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like him and Jocko would do it all. <clears throat> but uh, it actually came about just a couple weeks later, when I was finished with Boots and Saddles, and for my part of the series, because I did about 13 of those episodes, and the show went for one season, 39, and Lynn Stallmaster came up and said, you know that thing that you asked me about with the gunfight with Richard Boone? I said, yeah. He said, Sam Rolfe, who created the show, co-created the show, has written a script. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, he said, there is that part. There's that young guy. He said, it's not a huge thing, but it's pretty showy. And he said, if you want it, you've got it. You don't even have to audition for it. I'll give it to you. So I had a daughter that was about to be born. Well, the whole time we're on location at Iverson's Ranch, we were about 20, 30 miles out of the valley there, and up in the hills, and I had everybody in the valley that we knew on standby to take my wife to the hospital because this was daughter number two was on the way. And uh, we finished the picture at nine o'clock at night in the rain. In fact, Andy McLaughlin was the director, and they moved all the company trucks they could get with the headlights on up against the front porch of the ranch house there to get the last scene. And it looks like there was no rain at all. It's one of those kind of things that just worked out. So very, very, very late, I got back home. At um, 6 o'clock in the morning, the water broke. At 7 o'clock in the morning, Leslie was born in Doctors Hospital in Encino on Ventura Boulevard. And in those days, you couldn't come back and see your kid except visiting hours. There was none of this being in the birthing room of the television camera. You know, they showed you your kid through a glass, you know, the nurse ended up. They said, you can come back at 6 o'clock and look at her again for about five minutes. We'll hold it up for you again. But my mother-in-law, who was a doctor, came and got daughter number one, who was three and a half at that time, and took her. Well, for the day. And I was very, very nervous, needless to say. I, uh, I picked up my guitar, and I was actually singing Have, have uh, Gumbo Travel came from Riders in the Sky. I was singing Ghost Riders. But all during the location out of Iverson's, I kept looking at Boone in the black outfit. And of course, I'd seen him so much around the studio, in the fancy clothes as well as the, as the black outfit. And the, the Hotel Carlton <clears throat> scenes were always with the fancy clothes and so forth, but the job was always away from San Francisco. So I kind of had this thing 
rolling through my head, well, okay, Paladin, where will you roam next week? You're obviously not going to be in San Francisco. So it's Paladin, Paladin, where do you roam? Obviously far, far from home, Frisco being home. I had that much going, and I was strumming as hard as I could and doing Ghost Riders. And it started to fall into place with that beat. And <clears throat> so I, I had a yellow legal tablet over by my telephone just for writing down phone numbers in case Chick Jones called or something. Call him back. <laughs> I picked up that thing and wrote Paladin, Paladin, where do you roam far, far from home? And the rest was started rolling along. Of course, the signature, the, the Have Gun, Will Travel card, which became the most famous business card in the world. Have Gun, Will Travel, reach the card of a man. Once I got that, I wrote the whole thing in 20 minutes. But I can't read music. I've never been able to read music. I can't read music to this day, and I was afraid I was going to forget the melody. So I tried to record it on a little home recorder, and the capstan was bad. It was going, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and a friend named Sandy Stanton had had a little recording studio called Fable Records down on Sunset Boulevard, and I'd done a lot of demos for him, and he owed me a little studio time. So I called him and said, Sandy, i got to come down and record one song, just me and the guitar in an echo chamber. Have you got some time? He said, if you can be here, I can give you one to one fifteen. So I went down and recorded in one take. I did the thing in one take. But he took the tape and he made me two little demonstration records off of it. And I had written that as a musical thank you card to Richard Boone for having me on the show. We did the gunfight. He did he had this wonderful acting class, but I was way too young and too inexperienced to be in it. But he worked with me on all my scenes with him and really made me look good. So I took these two little discs over there, and they were shooting another episode. And I said, thank you for having me on the show. And I handed him a copy, and I went over to the office and handed one to Sam Rolfe, who had written the script and created the show, and said, thanks, Sam. I didn't even have one for Lynn Stallmaster. He gave me the job. I just had to have a little master tape, and I took it home. Then, on Tuesday morning, I got a call about 9 o'clock in the morning, from Sam Rolfe, he said, you've got to be at Beverly and Fairfax, main CBS office at 2 o'clock this afternoon. I said, why? He said, because Dick Boone and I played that song for the executives of CBS over the weekend, and they want to talk to you about buying you and the song for the theme song for the show. Now, if you folks have been watching Have Gun Will Travel on the Western Channel, or if you own the videotapes on Columbia House, you will know that the first about 20 episodes did not have a theme song. They just played the instrumental at the end of the dum 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 and kept repeating that. And it said, that song tells the story of who Paladin was. By this time, the show was creating a lot of big, big interest. All right, was Paladin real, or was this a legendary deal? Was it a made-up character? And it virtually explained the, the character. Paladin in the, in the dictionary means two things. It means a knight and a mercenary. And they have based this character after they got out of the Allen Ladd syndrome that went to the Western thing and came up with the name Paladin instead of Raven, they based that character on the Black Knight of the Knights of the Round Table. There were 11 good knights, the altruistic good knights, who had their own estates. And there was the Black Knight, who was a mercenary. And his name was Paladin. And that's all it was. So the whole thing came down, and they had me over there. I had a wonderful little Greek agent named Peter Marcos, who was a little fighter, very tenacious little guy. And we went in there. I'm 23 years old, had no credits to fight CBS with at all. And they were welcoming us with open arms because they wanted to buy the song. They wanted to buy my vocal track and have me do it, but they wanted to pay me one payment, no screen credit, they wanted to own the song for their publishing company. And 500 bucks. Now, I had a new baby at home, a three and a half year old, and when you're 23 years old and it's 1958, 500 bucks looks pretty large. <laughs> Peter whispered in my ear and said, if they want to give you 500 bucks, they can do better than that. So he's just went over and talked to Leo Lefcourt, the big attorney there, and he said, no, I don't think we'll do that. He said, well, let's talk it over. So they took three lawyers back in the office, and within five minutes they came back and said, okay, $5,000. <laughs> <laughs> 5000 look, we're here at the end of this building, you know. <laughs> kind of champion at the bit. Peter said, no. He said, if it's worth 5000 to them in five minutes' time, it's got to be worth at least that. So he fought for the screen credit. He said, we'll take some smaller money up front. We own the song, Johnny owns the song. We'll publish it with our people, and we'll take Screen Actors Guild wages on the song, royalties and residuals. And then they had played the song for Mitch Miller down the, what they call the hotline from Los Angeles to New York. And Mitch Miller brought me over the telephone for Columbia Records. 
So when I walked out of that office in about 30 minutes, I had a contract with CBS Television as a singer, as a songwriter, and with Mitch Miller in New York at Columbia Records to record the song for Columbia Records. And of course, Autry, being my great hero, recorded for Columbia. That's where I wanted to be, any place in the world. So it turned out to be the greatest 20 minutes of my life, all to a fluke, because I never wrote that as a theme song. I wrote it strictly as a musical thank you to Richard Boone. What an amazing story. And, and how inspiring to hear that just a few minutes out of your life, doing something that you feel you need to do that might not seem extremely important at the time, but is unbelievably important to you and to many people around you and can affect your life forever. Thank you for joining us for Western Trails. We hope you'll join us again here next time. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great day. Thank you.